All right. Uh, welcome to my channel, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to quickly demonstrate on, you know, very often confusing scenario where your environment is messed up with multiple CDBs and multiple PDBs. And so often you used to get that unable to connect to PDB because of the fact that there is a misconception or misunderstood on our TNS file naming convention. So there's a lot of difference between a traditional TNS naming convention and the PDB level TNS naming convention. That's what I'm going to demonstrate in, in this particular today's demonstration. Right, straight away going to the lab exercise. Uh, if you are new to my channel and first time visiting to my channel, uh, I request you to subscribe my channel. And if you like my content and videos, please do share with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to give your thumbs up. Right, let's get started on my lab exercise here. And I have a server. This is my Oracle Lab One server, where I have two CDBs, Dev CDB and Test CDB. Both the CDBs has its own PDB, and both of these CDBs are running from a particular Oracle home, single Oracle home. So, in simple words, I have a Dev CDB here, Dev CDB, and then I have. test CDB. So both of this CDB database has its a PDB database here. And then you and test CDB has its PDB database. Both the name of the PDBs are PDB1. And you and this PDB has the same name, PDB1. Nobody is stopping you. You can create your own PDB because that is local to that particular CDB. So just quickly show that one. I'll connect to my one session here. Login to Oracle user, set the environment to Dev CDB, ENV, pipeline, capital Vora. So all the environmental variables are set to Dev CDB. Connect to your CDB database, right? Just to show PDBs, right? You have this C template and PDB1. So you have a Dev CDB. Inside that, you have this PDB1. Fair enough. I have one more duplicate session of the same server. I'll connect to Oracle user dot or INV test CDB connect to CDB database and then do show PDBs. So you have same thing. You have CDB dollar or PDB dollar seed followed by PDB one. So even you have a same PDB on this particular server here in the test CDB. So you are here on the same dev cdb you have this pdb1 and you have your pdb1 so same pdb available on both the different cdbs both of these pdbs are independent each other so i can quickly go ahead and then check my tns details grep tns so i have this particular listener which is running from this oracle home this is the same oracle home so the setup is looks like this so i have this oracle home so this Oracle home, this is a Oracle home, user on app, product, DB home, 19C DB home. This is my 19C DB home, underscore one. So same Oracle home, I installed one dev CDB, I installed one test CDB. Two separate CDB databases are installed from the same Oracle home. And from this Oracle home, I am running a listener called L I S T E N E R. That's the name of the listener. L I S T E N E R. So same listener. Any connections comes through this particular listener. Whatever this listener. So it's gonna go to that particular listener, and that listener will route that connection to CDB or Dev CDB or Test CDB via that listener. The moment I do LSN or CTL. SNRCTL status and listener name. And you can see all of this. Where here's a interesting factor. What is that? You have a PDB1 service. That's a PDB1 as a service name. And one PDB is part of Dev CDB and one PDB service is part of test CDB. So this is very interesting. How come it's possible that one single service part of two? databases here. The dev CDB and test CDB two are two different 
database instances, but uh, you can see only one single services. So that's a tedious here. So in order to demonstrate that, I have given scenario here. For this dev CDB, the PDB one, I have created a user one and his password under PDB one, and I have created user two and password as a user two on PDB two. That's uh, basically my PDB one itself. So I can call it as a PDB two. So here instead of PDB one and PDB two, what I can say, dev, dev CDB underscore PDB one and dev CDB underscore PDB two. Here I can say same PDB one database, but I'm gonna connect it uh, test CDB underscore PDB one and test CDB underscore PDB one. So both the PDB one belongs to dev CDB and belongs to test CDB independently. And I have created a user one on this dev PDB one. I created this user two on this test PDB one. And then I created a Malik user on PDB one of this dev database and PDB one of the test database on both the databases, this Malik user, again, two independent users. It's not the same user, Malik user on one PDB and again, Malik user on another PDB belongs to dev and test. These two are independent users and these two are independent users connected to PDB one and PDB one. One PDB belongs to dev and one PDB belongs to test. So now let's connect to using this particular TNS entries. So if I try to connect my user one SQL plus user one and dev CDB underscore PDB one. Let's go ahead and check TNS entries. Oracle underscore home network admin cat TNS names. So I have a PDB one underscore dev CDB, PDB one underscore test CDB. The TNS entries are quite reverse here. So it should be PDB one underscore dev CDB, PDB one underscore dev CDB. Let's remove this one here. And same thing goes for your PDB one underscore test CDB and PDB one underscore test CDB. Right, let's go and try for this one now. If I try to connect to user one, your user one always you are in the impression that user one, when I try to connect, it will always connect to your database. If you see user one, it says invalid username and password. What is happening here, right? So let's demonstrate that one. Your listener, I'll remove this listener. I'll remove this connection, remove this connection and remove this connection. Okay, now we have this listener here. We have this, this from Oracle home. Listener is running here. So this connection here, SQL plus user one user password, the connection will go to listener. Listener will get confused whether to route this connection to this or this. Because user one is available here and user two is available here. So you are trying to connect the user one, the listener will get confused. Okay, let's route the connection to a dev PDB. So if it crowds the connection to dev PDB, the user is able to connect successfully. In this case, the connections is going to your test PDB. That's where it says username and password does not exist. So now if I cancel this one, I try to reconnect one more time. This time it's gonna be able to connect. Again, still not able to connect. Still listener is routing the connection to test. Again, cancel it. Try for one more time. Still not. Try for one more time. Right, now you are able to connect here. How come it is possible? Let's remove this one, remove this one. Right, this time here, you are able to connect. Three times one, second, and this is third. Three times you are unable to connect and four times you are able to connect with the user one, password, and PDB one. Now your listener is correctly routed the connection to your PDB one belongs to dev. So that is going to be challenging, right? Same thing goes for your PDB2, the PDB1 for the test connection as well. Let's try this one now. Again, now I can exit. I'll retry one more connection. Again, you're able to connect. Exit one more time. Again, able to connect. 
exit try for one more time again able to connect exit try one more time able to connect try one more time able to connect try one more time right so still you are able to connect so it is it is not in our end listener is going to route the connection to either your dev or test because if i do ls and ctl status listener you can clearly see the same pdb service belongs to my test and dev listener may route the connection to either dev or test doesn't matter let's go to the second user here user 2 his password and connect to pdb1 test cdb if i try to connect here again the user is unable to connect what happens here the listener is trying to route the connection to my dev cdb but this user 2 is available in the test not in the dev so connection is not established here and let's cancel it and re reconnect one more time again still routing it to the dev again still routing it to the dev one more time still routing it to the dev one more time still routing it to the dev so we don't have any authority we don't have any guarantee that this user may or may not connect because based upon the listener whether it's going to route it to dev or test we don't have any control on that then how to handle this one how to handle this kind of situation whenever user one try to connect always goes his connection to my dev pdb whenever user two trying to connect always route that connection to my pdb one belongs to test how i can tell that one you can tell that one by just tweaking your tns name dot or file so this is your traditional tns name dot or file we used to mention like this that's the traditional tns name dot or file with the service name as a pdb1 service name as a pdb1 so now along with this service name we need to add one more entry called instance underscore name instance underscore name for your pdb1 under dev it is going to be instance name dev cdb and the same thing instance underscore name is going to be test cdb so you need to add this instance name in your tns file so let's go and add that one for both my dev and test so pdb1 is the service name i'm going to add my instance name here instance name dev cdb so for your test instance name is going to be test cdb test cdb all right so let's save this one and now let's try connecting to that users so now try for user 1 connection with the username and password with this new particular tns entries so your connections will always be successful in this case because we are routing the connection appropriately now so we are mentioning that instance name that will going to route the connection to the proper instances and proper pdbs let's try that user 1 connection now so user 1 is able to connect you can cancel and try multiple times we will never face any issue so again try connecting you are able to connect so let's try with the user 2 user 2 also able to connect without any issue if i run this sql plus user 2 password and pdb1 belongs to the test cdb so you have to connect cancel it again try one more time you are able to connect so no, no issue at all now this particular malik user again he has to use the same tns connections so you can able to connect your dev db select instance underscore name from v dollar instance right so dev cdb malik is connected with the pdb belongs to the dev cdb so if i try with the second malik user belongs to the test cdb of that pdb just run the same instance name he was able to connect with the same test cdb belongs to that pdb1 so in case if 
that TNS entry again I revert it back vi TNS name dot or a file and if I remove this instance name again gone case so you will not be able to connect now I can remove it one more time for the demonstration purpose. Remove that instance name. Right, fair enough. Let's go down and then remove that instance name from the PDB belongs to the test CDB. Done. You removed it. Now you can try to connect with the user one and user two. And it may or may not connect because we don't know listener can route the connection to anywhere. So your user one is able to connect. And I can try one more time. Right, this time it is failed. First time listener properly routed that user one to that dev, it was able to connect. And second time when you're trying to connect, the listener routed that connection to test. Because we don't know, listener is getting confused now. You have the same PDBs, belongs to two different CDBs, and both are running from the same listener, same Oracle home. I don't know. I'm getting confused. I can route it randomly. Right, same thing for user two. Right, able to connect, user two is able to connect to that test CDB of that PDB. And second time, able to connect again. Third time, it failed here now, see. So because your listener is getting confused here now. Same thing goes for Malik user. Malik user, who is part of this PDB one, belongs to that dev CDB, is trying to connect. And first time he's able to connect. And second time when he tried to log in, second time also listener routed properly, fine. Third time also went fine, no issues. Four time also fine. Right, it is routing fine. So it's all again, listener can randomly take a decision. We don't have any control on that. So you are Malik from CDB2, able to connect, right, able to connect, right, anyway. So the point what I'm trying to say, this is a bad design. First of all, we should not install multiple databases on a single Oracle home. We should not run multiple databases on a single listener. What is best practices? What we need to follow? We need to follow best practices, something like this. One database, it may be normal database or your CDB database. One database, one Oracle home, one listener right in this case here we should have gone with the dev cdb one database and one oracle home whatever this oracle home one oracle home and one listener from this particular oracle home you can create listener underscore dev cdb which is running under 1521 same thing you can go with the one database, in this case here, test CDB, and go with the Oracle Home 2, and go with the listener, test CDB, and go with a different port 1522. So you have to go with the one listener, one Oracle Home, one database, so that all the databases, all the Oracle Home and all the listeners are run independently each other. They will never collaborate each other. and in case, in my case, my situation here, it is one Oracle home. That Oracle home is this one. And one listener, the listener name is listener, which is running under 1521, but multiple DBs. I'm running multiple databases. In my case here, dev CDB and test CDB. So both of them, my dev CDB has the same PDB name, PDB1, and test CDB also has same PDB name as a PDB1, So which is a TDS. So we should not have multiple databases running from Oracle Home. That is going to impact many things. This is one of the impact, whatever this connection randomly routing 
to any of the CDBs. And if there is any maintenance on the dev, you have to bring down your test as well because both are running from the same Oracle home. If you're doing any maintenance like patching on this Oracle home or any maintenance on this Oracle home and you need to bring down your listener. So it's going to impact any fix you're doing it on the dev, which is going to impact on test. That's also one of the not a best practices. So we should not run multiple databases from the same Oracle home and the same listener. Right. And just for just for time being to avoid this kind of a situation. So we have directly put a, a TNS names by including a instance name like this. So right now you have done this setup without by mistakenly. So to overcome that one, one Oracle home, one listener, multiple CDBs and PDBs, same PDBs. So in that case, you can go ahead and then do a TNS entries properly with the specifying this instance name. In traditional databases, we never used to mention this instance name. But here, we need to call out that instance name clearly so that my listener will route that connection to the proper instances. All right, so that's uh, all about for the today's session. Uh, we have a MOS document for this particular explanation. I'm gonna post it in my channel. You can refer that MOS note. Thank you all. Uh, we'll see you in the next topic. Take care. Bye-bye.